We begin with a Fox News alert on a hostage crisis that is underway right now at a luxury hotel. An Al-Qaeda-linked group reportedly claiming responsibility for what you see on the left side of your screen. The situation fluid, as I just mentioned, but here's what we know right now. Islamic extremists, radical Islamists, armed with guns and throwing grenades, stormed a hotel in the capital of Mali. That is a landlocked country in West Africa, reference right next to Nigeria. At least six Americans who were there have been rescued, were told, taken to a secure location. But we're also told there may be more Americans inside that hotel. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here today, Andrea Tenteros, co-host of After the Bell on Fox Business, Melissa Francis, Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor, Julie Regensky, and today's hashtag one lucky guy, editor of The Daily Caller and co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend, Tucker Carlson, and he is outnumbered. A lot to get to today. Yes. We've been covering this for many days, these, uh, these um, terror attacks, and we'll get to it now. Thanks for being Amen. here. Thanks. All right. U.S. Special Operations Forces already stationed inside Mali are now helping to secure the scene at that hotel. It is the Radisson Blue Hotel. At least three people were killed after gunmen shouting, Alu Akbar, which is God is great, started taking hostages, 170 of them. Malian troops going floor to floor to free them. And just yesterday, French President Francois Hollande spoke of his nation's success in fighting radical Islamists in that very country of Mali, saying he'll do the same thing in Iraq and Syria. Paul Tilsley is joining us now with more. Paul, you're on the scene, able to confirm some things for us. Yes, indeed. Well, I'm in Johannesburg, which is still in Africa, very close, and uh, I'm able to confirm to you that uh, we've got, well, actually, what I can confirm is we've got conflicting reports, and we appear to be in a standoff, Harris. Several agencies reporting all the hostages have been freed, but that still has to be confirmed. But two sources say the gunmen are still holed up on the seventh floor of the Radisson Blue in a tense siege between them and Malian special forces. Between 18 to 27 bodies are reported to have been seen already, and, and uh, six Americans are confirmed to have been released, and, uh, but the State Department can't confirm whether other Americans have been staying in the hotel and were taken hostage. Uh, U.S. military says that all their special forces uh, have been accounted for, um, and Al-Qaeda uh, faction has claimed responsibility for this attack on a, on a tweet, Harris, and uh, this, this faction, it's not surprising news because there are quite a few Al-Qaeda factions in Mali. There's uh, strong Islamic uh, uh, radical groups running around in Mali, and the French have been trying to combat those groups. And these, are, these groups have been hitting back, and this is so far, this hotel attack is the biggest attack that they've done. Um, and, and with, a, with a, um, uh, an allegiance um, uh, uh, here to, to ISIS, when it comes to that, um, the ISIS is not definitely involved, but these groups have pledged allegiance to ISIS. Harris? Paul, thank you very much. We'll check back as the news warrants. Uh, on that bit of allegiance to ISIS, just so I can share this with everybody on the couch uh, and our audience as well, I reached out to General Jack Keane a couple of hours ago, and he said, well, ISIS would never deny that because it only makes them look, uh, you know, more like they're everywhere and more powerful. He said, but as far as we've been able to figure out up until now, and that, again, was a couple of hours ago, there's no real strong line between this al-Qaeda spinoff and ISIS, but we shall see. And then when you talk about the, the number of of dead. I gave out the confirmed number of three. 18 to 27 bodies are what uh, the forces on the ground there, the Malian forces, are saying that they witnessed as they entered the first couple of floors inside that hotel. And of course, now the conflicting reports of whether or not this is over are still ongoing. Now, just a, a few minutes ago, I was watching evacuation uh, footage coming across on our satellite acquisitions from that part of the world, uh, and it looked like they were still in the process of trying to secure that location. Nevertheless, Tucker, this is an ongoing fluid situation really since last Friday right. because there's clearly some communication going on and some some uh, credit taking if you will well sure and more, more broadly there is coordination in that all of these attacks are aimed at the West African cities tend to be the business of the country tends to be uh, undertaken in a hotel in one hotel in every capital city in Mali this is that hotel so this was an intentional attack against the West the other point I would make the obvious one you noted this is just one country away from Nigeria with the most populous mm -hmm 
country mm -hmm. in Africa, the, one of the world's great oil producers, and a country that's about half Muslim, and a country that's about to split it apart because of radical Islam. So for Americans watching this and thinking, well, Mali's a long way away, West Africa, where is that? This is about to, I hope I'm wrong, but it looks like this is about to become a regional conflict that will have reverberations here in the West. This is a big deal. Yeah, and of course I misspoke. I didn't realize where Tisley was. He said, "Well, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm in the, the vicinity, if you will, in South Africa. These other countries are on, as you say, pins and needles, just hoping that this doesn't spread. You've got Algeria right above Mali as For well, sure. that's had its own radical and Islamist Niger right next to it. All exactly, Andrea. And speaking of Algeria, that is where a lot of these French. Mm -hmm. nationals and their families have immigrated from. So to build on what Tucker was saying, this isn't just a regional issue, it's a global issue. And this morning in the Wall Street Journal, there's a report that you don't have to be part of ISIS or wear the jersey, so to speak, to be interested in destroying the West. You can be part of Al-Qaeda, you can be part of Boko Haram. The goal is the same across the board. They want to destroy the West at all costs. At the same time, you have someone who wants to be president of the United States, Hillary Clinton, saying this has nothing to do with Muslims or Islam. You have Obama saying that ISIS is not Islamic. The Islamic State is not Islamic, is what he said. John Kerry rationalizing events like this. And you have Bernie Sanders saying that they're just upset because it's too warm in Africa and we should probably get them, you know, windmills or something for climate change. So I think the message coming out of the United States right now is not serious. They're not serious people who are in control. And I think this is a big problem. But it just highlights this attack, how... I think wrong the administration is getting it and the threat that we face. Can we just talk resources for a second? Because Tucker mentioned the oil rich nations around this uh, and really what's at stake here and, and kind of how we fit into this entire picture. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's definitely an oil rich area and that's a big piece of it. But I actually don't think that's a central part of this particular discussion in the sense that back to what Andrea said, I mean, it's really about tone from the top. It's about the tone that the president is setting and that's weakness and weakness is provocative. We're seeing that around the world right now, and if it feels like things are blowing up around you, they are. It is accelerating, and we could be responding more, and maybe it's not boots on the ground immediately, mm -hmm. but we're flying 8 to 12 sorties. I mean, talking about resources, we should be doing 100 sorties a day. That's not more boots on the ground. That's elevating this attack because they are escalating the attack on us, yeah. and it can be felt by ordinary Americans. Well, one thing I can tell you from reading is that a lot of the buildings that we're trying to hit now are empty because they've been moving. Report I mean, we're not on the ground. I'm not on the ground, obviously. We've got those 50-plus special uh, operations forces. I wrote down what you said. Weakness is provocative. Yeah. What's your thought on that, Julie? Well, you know, this, this to me leads to the larger question of exactly what we're going to do if you want to declare strength. And if you want to declare strength, then we have to have an honest, serious discussion about what that takes. Does it take putting boots on the ground in six, seven, eight, A hundred sorties instead of 100 12. A hundred sorties is not going to solve the problem. You're going to fly sorties now over Mali. You're going to fly sorties over potentially Algeria, over Libya, over Tunisia. And that's just in Africa. Over the Sinai Peninsula, over Iraq, over uh, Syria, over Lebanon, and so on and so forth. The question is... This is a global fight. Andrew is absolutely right. This is a global fight. And, the, and what nobody's been able to answer this for me, not the president, not Secretary Clinton, nobody on the Republican side, have an honest discussion with the American people about what you want to accomplish. Because to me, what this would take is a generational war with hundreds of thousands of boots on the ground. And I don't think anybody has the appetite for that or certainly the political courage to stand up and say, you know what, if we want to do this, we're going to have to launch essentially World War III, a mass invasion into all the countries I just listed, because these people keep spreading. Nobody is going to have that discussion because right. nobody's going to have the political right. will to have that discussion. Yeah, that's the question. Do you want to drag President Obama into a war that he doesn't want against an enemy? Not that just he's him. I don't, think, I don't think anybody is. All right. Meantime, the hunt for a key suspect.